Hey guys, I'm Chewy Mew, and welcome to my channel, but more specifically, welcome back to another Chewy Mew review, where today we're going to be taking a look at a Custom Toy Biz, um, Custom Toy Biz Battle Ravage Green Goblin. So this figure I reviewed before, and then I decided, hey, I'm going to customize it. Uh, I already do have the officially released uh, Battle Ravage Green Goblin. He doesn't look movie accurate. It's still a very fun figure. On the camera, you can't really tell much of the difference, but when you compare him to the original Green Goblin figure, oops, keep bumping my tripod, you can see, you can totally tell the difference between these two. Like, the color's different. The only thing is he doesn't have an interchangeable head, or you can't take his mask off, unlike the original one. But still, very nice-looking figure. It's not comic book accurate, or, I mean, not movie accurate, but I still, I still love it. Mm -hmm. Hang on. A lot of, I still I still had a lot of fun with that guy. Still very cool. But this one, I customized it recently, and his legs are kind of loose here. But this is a custom. I decided to customize that other figure since it's kind of more like it doesn't have too much articulation because his glider came with a gimmick, so they didn't give him a lot of articulation here. But here is Green Goblin. A Battle Ravage Green Goblin. Looks much more movie accurate. Take a look at the face here. So you can see it looks kind of dirty, like there's chunks and stuff. I sanded down the face, but I sanded down the right side too much. You can see it kind of looks like kind of flat compared to the other one. He kind of he kind of like has the one yellow eye, but has the other one not white. You can't see the teeth much there. It looks like he's got chunks of like dust and stuff on him. Let's look at the back. I did some more sanding here to make it look kind of kind of you know kind of dirty. I left some spots with the original color. Just so it's still, you can still see the kind of how the character looks. I put some red spots on it to look kind of like blood. What I did to make the torso look like there's chunks sticking out. Actually, for this, I'm going to move the light down here like this. So you can see the details here. You can see like there looks like uh, sand chunks and stuff, like dirt chunks. I took toilet paper, actually. I painted the figure. I put, I just dumped paint like I just slapped it with a paintbrush. Then I took the uh, toilet paper and I just kind of like squeezed it on it. Like I stuck it on it to make it look like he's got chunks there. You see like camera focus. You can see it looks like there's chunks and stuff stuck to his suit. There's like the under underwear kind of part. Like the, the waist pelvic area. You can see there's some spots of the green because painting joints, that's really hard. Like painting joints, the paint just doesn't stay. Get some more spots of his boots. You can see on the bottom, it still does say 2002, Main China. I don't know why these figures, they don't say, um, they say Marvel Entertainment. Or they, they say Marvel, the movie, but they don't say Toy Biz. I don't know why. They just didn't say it yet. Some more damage on the, on the, on the thigh here. See the knee pads there on the boot. I didn't do too much on the boot here, like on the shin area. Don't know why there's yellow there. I think I spilled some from the eye and it got down there somehow. You can see, like, if you look at this, you can even see there's, like, it looks like a hair right there next to my, next to my, next to this finger. You can see it looks like a chunk sticking out. I think it looks very cool. looks much more accurate to the movie compared to the other one. But I still love that other movie figure for, for, I mean, ha Toy Biz still gave us that. They still gave us a, a Battle Ravage version. I mean, not as movie accurate, but let's be honest, Hasbro, Hasbro would never do that. Like, they didn't, they didn't, like, they could have released a Battle Ravage Spider-Man from Homecoming, and they never did, but they could have, that would have been cool. I mean, I don't care too much about the, those figures, or those movies, to be honest. I get some hate for that, but I don't know. To me, I just don't care about much about those movies, but this Green Goblin, I feel like the custom, it came out really good. It definitely looks like he has chunks on it, because in the movie, it gets, like, covered in dirt when Peter drops that wall on him, and he's beating the crap out of him. I don't know, to me, just... To me, that it just looks very awesome, very fun looking figure, um, very nice, you know, very cool. Let's go over his articulation. His head has a ball joint still. He has a waist swivel here. His arms rotate all the way around. They go up like that much. His shoulder pad kind of blocks it, which they're kind of stuck to here. You can't really move them on their own. He has a rotation here next to the elbow, in the wrist. The other arm has the the other arm has the same. Rotation here, which I think I already said. The legs kick up pretty good, and he can do the splits. Because, of course, Green Goblin could do the splits. He doesn't have to go back to formula to do that. Double bend, or a single bend in the elbow, or in the knee. Rotation here in the boot. And it's like a very good ball joint, because you're able to put him on his glider. Which, 
The final battle of Green Goblin doesn't use a glider, and when he does use it, it goes shing. So he doesn't need a glider because it'll kill him. <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be all for this one. Uh, very cool looking. Very lot of uh, did a lot of texturing to this. I just kind of slapped paint on this figure. In some spots, it looks kind of funky because I just slapped paints on in spots. Some spots I didn't put any more paint on it. I just left it kind of plain, and I just like I just smeared paint on this. That's how I made this custom, honestly. I just, uh, I made it, I did it very sloppily on purpose. Like, I just took a paintbrush, like a paintbrush with this color, and I just went, I just, like, slapped the figure a bunch of times with the paint. Then I took toilet paper, and I just kind of, like, kind of, like, just did this. That's pretty much, like, what I did. It came out really good, but, like, you know, when your suit's going to be damaged like this, it's not done with, like, a theme, you know? It's done just, like, I mean, someone drops a brick wall on you, you're not going to look pretty, you know? You're going to look, you're going to look messed up like that, you know? <laughs> But very awesome looking custom. I, did, I think this is definitely one of my best customs. Looking at my shelf, I've got a few customs here. Just looking at my shelf in front of me, I've got one, two, three. This would be four. I've got like four customs just on the shelf that's on my desk. I have another another shelf behind me. Another shelf on my, another shelf behind me. I've got like a bunch of shelves and stuff displaying figures. And I think this one, I think a lot, some of my customs are really good. Some of them look kind of bad. Like the Black Cat custom, I tried fixing it, but it there's no fixing that figure. But that's me all for this review. Let me know what you think about this custom in the comic books. Let me know what you think about that final fight from Spider-Man 1. That's my, that's my second favorite fight in the trilogy. My favorite one is the train fight. And then... The this one is my second second favorite fight in the trilogy. Very good looking figure. I think it came out really good. But that's gonna be all for this review. Let me know what you think about this figure in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next review. Oh!